Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome to Piper Report. So the New York Times wrote an interesting article about YouTube and how they think YouTube is comprised of predominantly right-wing commentators, which they are true to some degree. See, what's happening here is that most of the a analysts and most of the commentators, they cannot get their voices heard anywhere else because they have to find a certain platform, a platform to do it. If you try to give out any type of commentary it's somewhere else, you're automatically going to be deemed a racist and a bigot because those on the left view people on the right that way. To them, it doesn't matter how far right you are. If you are left of Stalin or left of Lenin, I guess, yeah, left of Stalin, you are hardcore alt-right. That's how they view things. It's not just, well, he's low to the right, he's really to the right. No, if you are left of Stalin, you are hardcore right, alt-right. This isn't true at all. But now, in this article, they mentioned quite a few different YouTubers, and they basically said these YouTubers constantly use YouTube as a social media platform to display their anger toward the social justice warriors and many of those on the left in what they perceive as, keyword there, perceive as the left treating them unfairly. So. In essence, I'm not going to go over the whole article because it was really long, as you can see, but I will go over the names I mentioned here. The um, whole point of the article here is to make it seem like YouTube is comprised of right-wing commentators who are crying and moaning about how hard life is and how the left treats them unfairly. Even at the end here, in one of the paragraphs, let's see if I can find it here, it says... Its members believe that their videos and accounts are doomed to be banned, delisted, or stripped of lucrative ads, effectively diminishing their presence on the platform. Yes. And why do people think that on YouTube? Should I tell you why? Because it has already been happening. Like I said on my last video, all of the videos that Steven Crowder makes, louder with Crowder, get demonetized. But nothing the Young Turks make gets demonetized. And yet they cuss in theirs. And they're just as bad as, the, as Steven Crowder. Louder with Crowder, there isn't any swearing. There's no F-bombs. But since they adapt to a right-winging political spectrum, they are viewed as intolerant. They are viewed as violent. And they're instigating violence and hostility between the left and the right. And he was actually mentioned in here. Steven Crowder, 830,000 subscribers, is a right-wing comedian, talk show host, whose act is built almost exclusively around saying that he imagines liberals won't allow him to say, and blah, blah, blah. They also had Lauren Southern. Lauren, was she, uh, I saw her picture, but uh, Lauren Southern, 310,000 sub subs she went over. Stephen Molyneux, Black Pigeon Speak, as I said earlier, Paul Joseph Watson, um... I think there's some more. I don't think they said Sargon, but I guess Sargon really isn't right, and he's not from America either. But I do find this interesting. I mean, this is true. There is a reason why people go to YouTube, and this is why YouTube is, compo is comprised of many people on the right, because that's the only place they can actually speak without being deemed racist, without being attacked by what they believe in. Have you ever noticed on YouTube this happens, but it happens everywhere else? Whenever you want to discuss something with the left, if you ever question somebody on the left, their ideas or their political philosophy, you are automatically attacked. You are attacked because you are a bigot. I mean, just look it up. Look at any YouTube video that has a left-wing um, speaker or anything like that. Automatically, it's because you are racist, you are a bigot. But when you attack people on the right, for the most part, I won't say all of them because not all of them do, but for the most part... People challenge that idea. They don't say, whatever, you're an idiot, blah, blah, blah. They say, explain to me why he is wrong. Explain to me why he is this. That is just a common thing that happens between the right and the left in terms of political dialogue. If you question somebody's policies on the left, you are automatically deemed racist. This happens in the real world, especially on universities. But this also happens a lot on YouTube. But if, if you go to YouTube videos and watch people question the YouTube commentator people on the left question those on the right, you will see those on the right, the majority of them, say, explain to me why he is wrong. And 
that's 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 the difference between the left and the right is that whether you hate the left and you're far right or whether you're far right far left and you hate the right you can actually view this objectively just go on any type of right wing commentator and look at their comments and you will be able to tell then go on a left wing commentator and look at their comments if you can a lot of left wing commentators actually don't allow comments to happen why because they are afraid to get their ideas questioned and that is why tim pool said who's a journalist that he has trouble bringing people on the left onto his show because he noticed that when you debate someone on the right they're willing to debate and discuss their ideas those on the left are afraid not necessarily afraid of being um made may look like a fool but being afraid that they might actually have to try to back up what they are preaching and a lot of them can't because for the most part the facts do remain on not not on the right because i don't believe republicans are right but the facts do remain on the centralist side to the right side they use statistics they use facts they use studies the left uses emotion and feeling and that is the fundamental difference between the left and the right especially when you're talking about youtube and you can view all this in the comments section like i said earlier but i want to see who else they have like i said they have black pigeon speaks um stefan molyneux i will post this link in the description you can check it out and read the whole thing if you want but this kind of does tie into my last video that if youtube does continue to demonetize everyone and oh yeah but this is kind of back what i why, why i went down to begin with i kind of went way on digression there but yes i mean the adl is going to be looking over youtube creators to see if they constitute hate speech well the adl thinks a picture of a frog is hate speech they compare that they think that is synonymous with someone in the kkk so if you have a frog in your thumbnail you're probably going to be deemed as someone who advocates for hate speech and violence so people have a right to be worried it's not just their fears aren't realistic they are realistic because the adl does this type of behavior the adl has said stuff like this in the past what they feel is hate speech when in reality it's not even close to hate speech so people have a right to be worried about getting banned and about being demonetized because it's already happening and it will continue to happen now that the new york times did an article like this people on the left the corporate media especially are seeing that they are losing viewership more people are receiving their news from youtube and other social media platforms and not from them so they're going to eat so i can see youtube even working harder to demonetize all of those with right-wing viewpoints to demonetize all of those and probably man those who they disagree with this is happening in germany already Rep journalists are not allowed to report on what is actually happening in, in uh, germany they get banned from facebook they get banned from twitter i believe i even heard one journalist who was deported because she kept on discussing what is happening from the migrants bringing a crime and how they are causing lots of rape and assaults i mean this is serious stuff here it's not just right-wing rhetoric that is based on falsified fear there is a reason to be angry about this there is a valid reason to be angry about this but yeah steven crowder um, Lauren Southern, Stefan Molyneux, Black Pitch and Speak, Joe Paul, uh, Paul Joseph Watson. I think that's it for the most part. I will put the link in the description, but check it out. And yeah, time to look for the next social media platform. And I'm done.